Hi, I'm Sam from Kneecraft and today I'm here to show you how to make one of these fantastic wall shades from one of our creative lampshade making kits. So let's just have a little look at the shade. So this is a half shade, as you can see, absolutely perfect for wall light fittings. Um, just to turn it around there so you can see the inside. The best thing about this kit is that you can use your own choice of fabric with it. So that might be a particular pattern or design or even a colourway that you want to match into the interior of your home. So you can display whatever you want on here in terms of a woven fabric. These are just some fabrics we've got here to give you an idea of the kind of patterns, tones, shades that you can use. So really lovely there and any of these would be perfect because they're all woven. So let's have a little look and see what's in our box. So first of all, we have the wall light frame. And as you can see, it's got the half cylinder here at the front. And if I can just turn this round to show you, we've also got these two indents here, which are used for your hanging hooks, for your fixings. And you'll see here in the centre, we've got the opening for the light fitting. And that is for a UK light fitting, which is the B22. So that's the standard light fitting that you'll just see around your home. So we also have in here our PVC. And I've actually got a piece here already rolled out in front of me. So this PVC is professional lampshade making PVC. All the components in the kit are really high quality and exactly what you would expect to see on the high street in a bought lampshade. So this has passed rigorous testing um, from the Lighting Association Labs, but most importantly is it's fire resistant. So that means that you can be assured that it's a safe product to use for your lampshade. Just to turn over on the back, you'll see our Stick It logo there. Um, so we're one of the main producers of this PVC. And this is a sticky back backing that will peel away and will leave a sticky surface for us to attach our fabric to um, underneath. Also, what's fantastic about this kit is there is a kiss cut all the way around. So that actually goes all the way around the oblong. And this is already cut in for you to make it really easy to put together. And this creates a fabric margin. And you'll see how that works as I go on for the demonstration. Also in our box, we have some double-sided tape. This is a high-tack tape. It is, just show you now, it's flexible, it's transparent, and it has a red backing tape on it. And we're going to use this to hold our wool shade together. Also in our box, we have a finishing tool. And the finishing tool, as you can see, has got two long edges and a point, and then a serrated edge at the bottom. And this is used for tucking all the fabric around the frame, as you can see here at the end, giving you that really kind of professional, high quality look. And then finally, we have our instruction sheet. And these are photo pictorial instruction sheets. These come with all of our kits and they just take you through step by step using all the hints and tips there to make up your wall shade. So just to talk about fabrics, this is a woven fabric, as I mentioned. Um, lightweight, this is a craft cotton. You could use anything up to a medium weight upholstery uh, weight cotton as well um, and I wouldn't use stretch on this particular um, kit purely because it doesn't work well with the sticky back on the back of here and it will just stretch out of shape and it won't give you the products you're looking for. So stick with a woven, lots of different colours and choices. This is a dashwood print which is really pretty and beautiful so we're going to actually make the matching um, shade to go with this one. So first of all, you'll need a clean, flat surface. So kitchen table is perfect. And the only tools you'll need are a pair of fabric scissors, or alternatively, you can use a craft knife. If you do use a craft knife, 
Just make sure that you've got something to protect your surface on your table. And those are the bits that you're going to need for this particular shade. So we're going to start with our fabric facing down. And you can just cut that roughly to size in advance, just to make things a bit easier. And then we're going to place the paper backing of our sticky back PVC down, facing down as well. And I'm just going to line this up, and I'm actually just going to use the pattern to do that, to make sure that that sits in the right position. Because we want the pattern to run along there and make sure it's all centred. So I'm just going to use those birds there. That's great. And all we need to do is just simply pull this back, peel away a small section of the backing, and around about five to ten centimetres should do it. And we're just going to look at our positioning on our pattern there and secure that in place. And I just use the base of my fist just because it makes sure that the PVC and the fabric are adhering. And then all we do is pop our hand underneath and pull the backing paper away and rub down into place again. And we just keep doing that until all the backing paper has come away. And if you feel a bit more confident, you can pull a little bit more away. Now it's all stuck in place at this end, it should become a little bit easier. And there we go. And just to mention that this product is so easy to make. It really is a kind of a beginner's craft of products. You need no previous experience for this. So if it's something you fancy having a go at, it's, it really is quite straightforward. So we've now adhered that down. And all I'm going to do is I just always turn over, just double check that there's no loose threads or frays caught underneath there. That's looking really good. And then we just take our fabric scissors or your craft knife, if that's what you're using, and simply start to cut this out. So I always just go short edges first, just to get in the swing of things. And then we're going to use the long edge. And all I do is just push my scissors up against the edge of the PVC. So kind of using it as a guide, really. There we go. So that's the long edge. And then back onto the other short edge. So there we go, that's all cut out for us. And all we need to do now is we're going to remove our kiss cut. So we just need to push this back gently and remembering it's all the way round. So we just need to gently open that up and I'm just going to do the long sides first. And then just along the short edges. And there we go. That's just, you can just hear the cracking sound of it popping open. And then on the short edges here as well. And what we're kind of looking for is a bit of an entry point into here. So here, if I just push down on the main panel and lift up here with my other hand, you can see that that's now starting to work its way free. So we just very gently need to lift this up and you will get a little bit of fraying dependent on your fabric along the edge but we're just trying to avoid too much so just nice and gentle. And any frays that get caught you can just kind of detach them with your finger. There we go. So that all comes off in one piece and there's just a little bit of fraying there and as you can see now what that done is it's left us with exactly the right margin around the edge so that's where it's really clever because all the measuring is done for you 
and you don't need to think too much about that. So I'm just going to cut that fray off and there's a couple just here at the sides just to neaten that up. Okay, so that's our panel already finished with and now we need to start working on the frame. So taking your double-sided tape, I'm just going to cut away the little green starter section there. And we just need to apply the tape. So I'm just going to turn it onto a side so you can see. And we literally need to put the tape on so that the frame sits between the two edges of the tape. Now I always start mine just a little bit further down, leaving the top bar of the frame free because we're also going to cover that as well. So it means you don't have any tape overlaps. So just run that down, just making sure that the tape runs along the frame and the frame sits in the center and if you you don't get it quite right you can always lift it back up as i've just done there and then when you get to the other end you just need to snip away snip away just before you reach that bar and then this is quite an important bit what we're going to do is we're just going to simply push using our fingers and thumbs push the tape around the frame So we've done one side, so I'm just going to move and do the same on the other side as well. So exactly the same. Just rolling it down. And just keeping it centred. And again, when we get to the bottom, just snipping away there. Perfect. Exactly the same again, fingers and thumbs. So I would advise putting the tape on and then rolling it round on each section so that you're sticking it straight down and it's starting to do its job. And then finally, we're just going to do the two short sections. And you'll feel a bit more confident with your tape by now. You'll be used to handling it. So you can do bigger stretches. And again, just cutting away. And rolling round. And then the final end. There we go. And I'm just checking to make sure that that's centered again. Because what's going to happen is, is the frame is going to be attached to the PVC panel. So we just need to make sure these are all coated. Don't worry about the spokes, particularly at this point either. The tape should just nicely sit around them. So just before we start going any further, we just need to think about our direction of fabric. So obviously we've got a bird that needs to be facing upright. So we just need to think about how we're going to position our frame. And the way to remember is that these will sit at the top. So you just need to look for the top of the panel, which is here. That means we're going to have to roll this way. We don't want to do it this way because it means then the panel will be upside down. So just looking at that again, have that ready there. And we're actually going to do from this side and roll like that. So I'm just going to remove the top pieces first. So just be careful when you pick up the end of the tape that you are only removing the red. It is quite a high tack tape, but sometimes if you give both layers a good tug, it can come off and we don't want that. So just find the end, there we go. Another one, and then finally, the end one, there we go. 
And just remembering what we said, so this is our hanging hooks here, so these need to be on this side. What I find is, even though it's tacky, it's good just to go straight in and just lean over. And what we're looking for, the frame and the PVC are exactly the same size. So it's just making sure, if you look from above, that your frame is going to sit on top of the PVC. And once you have it square at the top, it's then really easy to control coming down. So I'm just going to very slowly roll and I'll just do it from the side now and that's easy for me as well. So feel free to move it around because I can now guide that into position. There we go. So the frame and the PVC size are exactly the same. So there we have it. So that's now rolled, as you can see. So that's now starting to look like our wool shade. So just to pick up your finishing tool, what we're going to start doing is we're going to tuck now this margin underneath the frame. And let me just show you on this one that we made earlier. You can see how that is all tucked underneath. So that's exactly the same effect we're looking for with this. Now I've, I start on the, the longer sides and I start in the centre as well and work my way outwards. So just tuck this over on the top and on the button, bottom and just all we're trying to do there is just make sure that underneath the fabric is touching the tape. Gives us this lovely clean crisp edge along the top makes the shade look really professional as well. And then do the same on the other long edge. And then to the short ends. So there are a few spokes here, but again, not to worry about these. Just make sure that we've got that curled over as much as possible and tacked to the tape underneath. There we go. OK, so just before we start tucking under, we just need to make a few small cuts with our scissors. So along the spokes, what we need to do is just lift up the fabric slightly, line our scissors up with the spoke, and then just snip in to the edge of the frame. Exactly the same on this one here. And then I'm just going to turn around and repeat on the opposite side. So it's just a snip in. And then on our corners where we've got quite a bit of excess fabric, we just need to cut in from the corner to the corner of the frame. That should leave us with kind of two triangles there. So I'm just going to repeat that all the way round. So just a really clear cut in. There we go. So now we're at the stage where we can use our finishing tool. As I mentioned before, it has a sharp point, two long edges and then a serrated edge. And we're going to be able to use these different sides and the point to be able to push the fabric underneath. So I'm just going to start in a corner and I'm just going to have this a little bit lower down so it's nearer to me. And what we need to do is, even though this looks like an awful lot of fabric, if we just fold that up, that will just push underneath. So that's just slid in there. So we're just going to, using the preparation we've just done when we folded the fabric in, we're just, I'm using the points on here, but you can use the long side as well. 
There we go. So that's just using the long side or even the serrated side just to push the fabric underneath. So we're just literally working our way along, pushing the fabric underneath. And you do have to be quite firm at this point um, just to be able to push it underneath. And now we've come to another corner here, so just need to tuck that under, right in, and that's where this tool becomes really useful because you can actually get your hand inside. Now we've come to a spoke, just push the split around the base of the spoke. There we go. And again, using that point, and if this becomes quite bent, you can just simply refresh it by cutting the bent section away. And just keep moving that round. And if there's any loose strays, we can kind of deal with those in a sweeping motion at the end. So the corners are a bit like kind of wrapping a present, really. You're just folding one over the other to make sure it goes in neatly. And then along the long straight again. And then just approaching the corner again, I'm just going to get this lined up. So that one just goes straight in. And then just pushing those around the spokes. And we're nearly there. Just got one more corner to do. I'm just going to fold that under. And there we go. So I'm just going to do a sweep now for any kind of loose bits, just using the long side to put those final little threads underneath. There we go, that's looking great. And there we have it. So really simple and easy, fantastic for a beginner, brilliant if you want to add a real personal touch to your home. I think you'll agree that those as a pair look absolutely brilliant. So for the light, for your wall light, you can either connect those to an exist, existing electrics that may already be on and in your wall, or alternatively, we supply these electrical components. So this is really simple to attach. You just simply screw off the skirt for the light, fit this in here, Screw on, similar as you would do with, say, a table lamp. Insert your bulb and then this simply goes into a main socket and has the on and off switch here. So really useful and handy um, to, to put up. So let me just pop this back up here to show you. There we go. So that's how you would pop that on your wall. So thank you for watching our wall shade demonstration. I hope we've inspired you to make this either for yourself, maybe for family or friends, or even have it as part of a wider lampshade making business. Thanks for watching.